This video will focus on how to install gauge porcelain tile panels on the floor for ANSI A108.19. Training is essential for a successful installation, especially with gauge porcelain tile panels. In fact, it's required within the standard. It's a completely different method altogether. This video does not replace the formal hands-on required training by ANSI. It's a supplementary piece to either before or after as a refresher. Working with gauge porcelain tile panels focuses on preventing breakage and ensuring a durable installation. The basics are somewhat similar to large format tiles. Always ensure the substrate is sound, stable, and flat. Substrates must meet flatness tolerances and high performance mortars are applied for maximum coverage and help to minimize voids under each panel. In addition, the standard requires sufficient trained personnel with experience using specialized tools and installation techniques. After cleaning the panel and the cups to remove any surface dust, use a suction cup grip rack to attach the panel. If you're using a rolling carriage, make sure that you lock the front wheels before you attach the panel. Panels typically come shipped in on A-frames. So removing it from the A-frame, ensure that you unlock the wheels after you've tipped it, enabling transportation. Clean the back of the panel with a sponge and water, then remove the excess water with a microfiber towel. Clean any dust off the substrate before application. Every time, this is a critical step. Mark your floors where the panel will be set and prepare to comb one inch over on every side where a new panel will adjoin. To save time, you can mix mortar at this point. After slaking, remix for about 30 to 60 seconds, then the mortar is ready for application. Apply mortar to the back of the panel. And the first step, as always, is to use the flat side of the trowel to key the mortar into the back of the panel. After that, apply more mortar until you have enough to comb straight lines across the short portion or width of the panel. This is required and will allow air evacuation as we set the panel on the floor. Key your mortar into the substrate first with the flat side of the trowel, of course. And to speed up the process, you can have two installers applying mortar at the same time. We recommend that you apply mortar to the back of the panel and to the floor substrate so that they finish at the same time. This will ensure that wet mortar transfer between the panel and the floor substrate when it's embedded. To assist in reach for full-size panel application, you can use hand support pedestals that can be placed into the wet mortar to assist in that reach for combing the mortar. Before moving the panels, always double check your suction cups every time. Can't stress that one enough. Stage the panel and ensure that you lock the wheels before tipping the panel. And remember, adequate manpower is necessary and the communication between the manpower is critical. This is one method of tipping the panel in preparation for setting the panel into the mortar. As you tip the panel down, you'll want to hover it over its location, making sure it's aligned before placing it flatly into the mortar. After the panel has been placed into the mortar, step on the center of the panel to release the suction cups across the middle of the rack. It's important to stay in the center of the panel so that you don't trap air under the panel in the wet mortar. After the suction cups have been released, remove the suction cup rack. Step onto the center of the panel, then take small shuffling steps down the center toward the end of the panel. Make sure that you stop two to three inches away from the edge for any areas that will have adjoining panels. We will tie those in later. After shuffling toward the end, shuffle back toward the other end. Now you've set the panel in a center line. Now get back to the center and use shuffling side steps 
to help collapse that mortar and evacuate the air under the panel. Again, stop two to three inches short on edges that will see panels adjoining. In a methodical fashion, continue to work with these four sections, evacuating that air in those small shuffling steps. After the panel has been walked out, you can prepare your lippage control systems for placement. Start two to three inches from the corners and space them apart about every 10 to 12 inches. Using a trowel can be helpful in spacing alignment. Allowable lippage for gauge porcelain tile panels is only 1 32nd of an inch, so these lippage control systems are a critical piece. In preparation for the next piece, it's important that you cut the mortar away from the first panel before applying fresh mortar for the second panel. You can use the ETM slide for smaller cut panels that won't fit on a full-size rack system. You'll clean the back of the cut panel and you'll key in that mortar with the flat side of the trowel and then you'll comb your ridges of mortar to the short side. As always, flat key coat first, combing in straight lines, ensuring that you comb more than one inch past all edges for even mortar distributions all the way around the edges of the panel. Be careful not to displace lippage control bases and ensure adequate mortar under and over the bases as needed. Place the second panel, move it into place, and ensure that you use spacers and not the straps as your spacers. Using handheld suction cups can assist in adjusting panels into place. Use a vibratory tool like the Ramondi Volponi, or you can use a handheld orbital palm sander with a protective cloth to help evacuate the air and collapse the mortar under the panel. Temporarily place caps or wedges into place between the panels and check for lippage. Remember, the allowable lippage between the panels is only 1 32nd of an inch. After you've set the panel, all the lippage is taken care of, clean the wet mortar from between the panels. Grout joints need to be struck completely clean. Remember, they're very shallow. This is the importance of removing those caps or straps. After cleaning, you can restrap the caps or replace wedges to allow for cure overnight. Very important that in your planning for your project that you consult with the panel manufacturer and the setting materials manufacturer to ensure that they are in complete agreement on the installation application and the products that are specified. In turn, this gives you the opportunity as well to make sure you get that warranty uh, for that complete system. If your floor doesn't meet flatness tolerances, you can use patching compounds to remediate small areas, but for larger flooring applications, we always recommend the use of a primer and a self-leveling underlayment. It's much faster and renders much better results. We recommend our multi-surface bonding primer as the most suitable product to install over sound and stable existing surfaces. It is strongly recommended to use at least a single coat of Red Guard over absorptive surfaces like concrete or gypsum underlayments. This will ensure that the mortar doesn't dry out or skin over, and in turn will ensure that wet mortar transfer of the panel to the floor substrate. For wet area installations over existing surfaces, we recommend using our Red Guard waterproofing and crack isolation membrane as a suitable primer and it also protects the assembly below that you're installing over. Which mortar do I use where from custom building products? To reduce the weight on the gauge porcelain tile panels, we recommend using our lightweight mortars. First up is our ProLite. We recommend this for light to moderate duty applications. This would be interior, walls, floors, uh, and mild overhead work. For those wet area applications and for exterior applications per ANSI A108.20, we recommend our Megalite. This would be for heavy and extra heavy duty applications. 
from the TCNA guide. After setting the panels has been completed, you can use Aquamix products to clean off all the working marks from the panel before grouting. To prevent picture framing on the panels, we recommend that you apply a grout release prior to grouting or a pre-seal for polished panels. Choosing a high performance grout like Prism or Fusion Pro will render the best results. Based on the size of the panels and the movement joint requirements at their location, flexible silicone sealant can be used in all joints instead of any rigid grout. Make sure that the products that you select all come from a single source manufacturer so that you can get a warranty for your complete system. For additional resources from custom building products, go to our website. We have a technical bulletin for gauge porcelain tile panels. We have our YouTube channel. And as always, don't hesitate to contact us on our 800 number.